In this video, we'll talk about the Zener diode. The Zener diode is similar to the PN junction diode and it was invented by Clarence Zener in 1934. The Zener diode can be best understood if we know the PN junction diode. So, we'll talk about the PN junction diode and its characteristic once again and then we'll go for the Zener diode. In the picture, you can see the Zener diode which is transparent and in most of the cases uh, for low power Zener diode, this uh, Zener appears to be transparent whereas high power Zener may not be transparent. So, let us talk about the depletion layer. We know in PN junction diode, we have two regions, P region and N region and in, in between these two, there is a space where this depletion layer is formed. It is not there uh, just because of the bias. So, even if the PN junction diode is not biased, we have the depletion layer. Now, in N region, we have the electrons as majority charge carrier and in P region, we have the holes as a majority charge carrier. How the holes are formed? We have seen in last video that for example, the aluminum has only three electrons in its or outermost orbit and therefore it can form the three bonds with silicon. Of course, these two are not the double bond, this is just representation of two electrons and there is one electron of silicon which is unpaired and therefore there will be a vacancy which is called as hole. Now, these holes are represented like this. And in N region, we have taken the example of phosphorus, where phosphorus has 5 electrons. These are the 4 electrons and I will show 1 electron as free because it is not taking part in the bond formation with the silicon structure. Okay. So, this is a silicon structure and phosphorus. So, this is the excess electron. It does not mean that there are no electrons in P region. There are electrons which are minority charge case. So, number of electrons in P region are less and number of holes in N region are less, but they are there. So, electron are majority charge carriers here and here the holes are majority charge carriers. Remember, hole is not a positively charged species, neither it is particle, it is just a vacancy. Okay. Now, <coughs> how this depletion layer is formed? This electron moves from N region to P region. Of course, it is not getting attracted because we have not connected the battery. Okay. So, this electron will go towards the P region because there are large number of electrons and therefore, there will be a diffusion. Now, what is the diffusion? You know, if you uh, have suppose a certain kind of essence sticks, agarbatti. So, this density of this essence will be more at this essence stick and it will be spread over the space. Okay. It will go from higher concentration to lower concentration. So, concentration is important. So, higher concentration to lower concentration, this essence goes. Similarly, we have higher concentration of electron. So, these electrons will go to the lower concentration of electron that is P region. And then, if this electron moves from here, this becomes positive, positively charged uh, ion, not particle, ion. So, this phosphorus positively charged. So, we can show this as positive with square. So, these are the ions and these ions will form here and if the electron comes here and uh, forms a bond with aluminum and silicon, then this aluminum will become negatively charged ion. So, that we get aluminum negatively charged ion here and in short, we can show the ions as negative charge enclosed by a square. So, this forms the depletion layer and this may be like uh, 4 or 5 atomic layer, 3 atomic layer depending upon the doping percentage. So, more is the doping, smaller will be the depletion layer. So, they, there will be a large pressure. Now, this electron, all the electrons cannot go to P region because these electrons will be repelled by these negative ions. Now, we will talk about the reverse bias. Okay. So, when we connect this P region to negative terminal 
and n region to positive terminal like this so what will happen so we have positive side here and negative side now the electrons will try to move in this direction the positive terminal like this so that there will be more and more ions will be formed of course this this uh, phosphorus uh, atom will get converted to ion because these free electrons will move away from it and therefore this depletion layer will start increasing so instead of now two three layers it may be like four five six or more than that similarly here also the electrons are provided holes do not go into the battery remember holes are vacancies so electrons will come here and then electron will combine with these holes we can have more layers of the ions like this so this depletion layer has increased and therefore the voltage across the depletion layer which also increase so normally in pn junction diode is 0.7 now it is more than 0.7 so even if you increase the voltage of this battery you will get very less current because no electron is passing through this okay but if we increase the voltage to a very high extent in in case of electronics it is like 6 volt 7 volt is a very high voltage this electron will get attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery the electrons from the p region n region already they have moved okay so this electrons will move through this of course there will be some kind of repulsion from these ions but this electron is highly active and it has very high velocity and therefore it can strike on other atoms or ions and it can release more electrons so one electron can give two more electrons the original and the one who is released after this uh, after the striking of the at on the atom or the uh, these bonds will be break broken in between say aluminum and silicon or silicon silicon also and therefore these electrons the two becomes four and four becomes eight and so on and so forth so there will be an avalanche of the electron avalanche means just like uh, you know if there is a uh, kind of uh, landslide okay so initially the uh, stone is very small and it starts falling and it uh, takes the stone in between uh, in in the path of the its trajectory it will strike on the other stone and then these two stones can strike on other two and so and so forth and there will be large number of stones that will come down so that is what it is called as avalanche avalanche and this is dangerous why because when you talk about large number of electrons are moving through this uh, diode obviously <coughs> high current will flow and as current increases we know there is a formula for heat generation the heat is generated as i square r into t so t is the time r is the resistance obviously in reverse bias we have the high resistance so even if there is a small current and the current is in square form so i square r will be a high value and uh, same thing you use for heating rod okay to make this uh, water uh, warmer or you can heat the water with the heater okay water heater so similar phenomena happens here and then this uh, diode can uh, heat up to a level where uh, it may burn out and you have to avoid this situation avalanche uh, breakdown or uh, the higher voltage in reverse bias specifically but uh, we can take the advantage of the same thing and we can use the same phenomena or similar phenomena not same but similar phenomena in zener diode so in zener what is the difference between pn junction and zener again in p uh, zener is also a pn junction diode where it is highly doped highly doped doping is 
doping percentage is more. So that means there are large number of electrons here and large number of holes are here. Okay. And then wh what happens to the <coughs> depletion layer? These large number of electrons will increase the pressure. You can see here, there were less number of electrons and as the percentage of electron was reducing, the depletion layer was increasing. Okay. So here, as the number of electrons are increasing, the depletion layer will be very thin, maybe of the order of 1 or 2 or 3 uh, atomic layers. Okay. So this depletion layer is very, very small and the thickness of this depletion layer is even less than 1 micrometer. So this is so thin, so that what, what can happen is the voltage applied, suppose we apply the voltage here in reverse bias of course. So this P will be connected to negative terminal and N will be connected to positive terminal. In this case, even if we have the voltage of 5 volt, then the field intensity, field intensity will be voltage divided by the thickness of the thin field, uh, sorry, thickness of the uh, thin uh, depletion layer. So, this will be 5 volt upon 1 micrometer and you can just uh, calculate this as 5 mega volt per meter and this is very, very highly intense field, very, very highly intense. So, these electrons which are in minority in P uh, region, they can move quickly even at this 5 volt or even less than 5 volt depending upon the what kind of uh, region we have, this depletion region we have. If it is thinner, then quickly these electrons can move and the current can flow, which was not the case in PN junction diode. PN junction diode, the depletion layer was increasing. In Zener diode, the depletion layer is very, very thin, it is very thin and therefore the electron can move easily. And therefore, the current will flow in Zener in reverse bias also like this. So, it will be very less up to certain value which is called as breakdown voltage say Vb and at the breakdown voltage suddenly the current will increase. Now, as the current increases so that the electron will start flowing in large number the voltage difference or the potential difference remains constant, almost constant. So, whatever the voltage you are giving, the voltage difference between P and N region, the PN junction diode is remaining constant and that is called as the breakdown voltage and this is a Zener breakdown. Whereas, in avalanche, we need a higher voltage like this and then suddenly it will uh, go to this is a burning stage. Okay. So, we should avoid, uh, of course, we can control it, but we should avoid this burning stage. So, in Zener, even at lower voltage, we can have the breakdown and you can see this is the reverse current, say IR, this is the reverse voltage, VR and you can see the voltage is almost constant and we can take the advantage of this. How? Now, let us consider this is the input voltage say V i, this is positive, this is negative. So, V i may vary like from 0 to say 10 volt or 12 volt and we apply the Zener in reverse bias. This Z like structure shows that this is a Zener, Z like structure. Okay. And then we just try to find out what is the voltage across some load. Load means you can just use any kind of load. Uh, electrical load or any other load, for example, a small buzzer or speaker or uh, maybe your, in, in case of high, let, high power uh, loads, we can talk about fan, uh, tube light and freeze, washing machine. So, these are the loads. So, now, if the current is flowing through this circuit, say I, there will be some current IZ and some current will go as IL and we know we have already studied that uh, this I get distributed as IZ into I -L, I -L, okay. and what are the voltage you are getting as an output 
is I R R L sorry I L R L load load current and load resistance. So what is the uh, product of this is the voltage out. Now how does this zener work in reverse bias? Now the current if the current increases that means input voltage increases so current increases. So as current increases now if you want the uh, output to kept constant you can increase the IZ. So as IZ increases IL remains constant as I increases. Okay. So if the input current increases the zener current will increase and even if the zener current increases the voltage across the zener remains constant. You can see the VB. So even if VI increases VB remains constant the V out is almost constant. Of course this value depends on the zener and this is called a zener breakdown voltage. So V Z B for example and suppose this is 6 volt and you are applying the input as a 7 volt. So one volt will be more drop across this zener or the current related to that one volt. So as more current is flowing through the zener the constant current what are the current that is required for 6 volt as at the output that is only pass. So excess current will be passed through this zener. So this zener will bypass this current excess current. Bypass means for example if this is a road which is coming from out of the city and we have a bypass here and we have the road into the city. Now what are the traffic you want through the city that only will be passed just like in RL case. So what are the required current we have that will be passed and extra current or extra traffic will be bypassed. So same thing happens here the extra current is bypassed here. So the zener will give the voltage constant even if the current is increasing. Whereas RL will not give the load resistor will not give the output voltage constant if the current is increasing. So we have to keep this current constant. So excess current will be drop here and uh, we can say that almost constant current is passing through this and uh, we know this formula the V out will be equal to IL RL where IL is constant, RL is constant and therefore V out is constant. So this way you can use the zener to uh, use it as voltage stabilizer. So stable voltage will be obtained across the zener.